I'm Jessica Peterson, and this is all the gear you need for run and gun travel filmmaking. My name is Jessica Peterson and I'm a travel, documentary, and commercial filmmaker based in Los Angeles. I've been shooting run and gun or travel filmmaking since 2015 when I made my first documentary on the island of Guam. From there, the world was my oyster. I've shot travel commercials in over 115 cities and 25 countries. My clients have included CNN, United Airlines, Southwest Airlines, Case Made Travel, and Matador Network. I love my job. However, it is very hard on your back. Because I've shot content around the world for years, I've worked out the perfect gear to take on the road. That's why I'm gonna give you some expert tips for packing your kit, what you should bring, how you should pack it, and how to make sure you get double duty out of as many items as possible. I'll also give you some money-saving tips, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. They say it doesn't, but size matters. The thing is you want small. You have to think small when you're on the road. In this video, I'm gonna recommend mirrorless DSLR cameras. So that's our first piece of gear. I love the Sony a7S III because it's 4K, shoots up to 120 frames per second, meaning I can get all the slow motion footage I need. If I'm shooting sports or action or animals, I always have the frame rate that I need. And the Sony is still very lightweight because it's mirrorless. It has improved picture quality in this model and it's 10 bit. That means even if I'm shooting for a big brand, they're not gonna notice that my camera is tiny and quite frankly passes as a point and shoot if I have a small lens on it. The other great thing about shooting with a, a mirrorless DSLR is just that, you're inconspicuous. So if you need to grab a clip in a public space, you don't have permits, you're not gonna be there for hours and hours, it's not a big production, you can pull out your tiny camera and probably get the shot. Now, if you need even better footage, I recommend the Blackmagic Cinema 6K. You get 4K with the Sony, but 6K with Blackmagic, and you can still shoot up to 60 frames per second. It also shoots four different versions of ProRes RAW. This is gonna be more useful if you're actually gonna put your camera on a tripod and your subject is static. I also recommend the Panasonic Lumix GH6. This is another popular mirrorless DSLR, similar to the Sony in that you get 4K resolution and a color depth of 10 bit as well. Vloggers love this camera. And then there's my old favorite. I actually started shooting on Canon cameras when I started doing photography. The Canon 6D Mark II has, as Canon users love to brag about, beautiful color quality. It's also a touch screen. And if you need to switch between video and stills, the Canon is a great option because it shoots up to 26.2 megapixels. With your mirrorless camera, if you're shooting run and gun, you absolutely do need a stabilizer. You need a gimbal. That's the most portable option. I have long shot with the Zhiyun Crane. It's very lightweight, it's simple, and it's very affordable. So I recommend the Crane 2S. It's been upgraded to better suit the needs of filmmakers, and it can hold all of the cameras that I've mentioned, plus accessories like a mic pack or a small LED light. For a little heavier duty gimbal, you'll need to get the DJI RS3. It's lighter and sleeker than the last Ronin, and it holds up to 6.6 .6 pounds of payload. That means if you do need a monitor or you have some accessories that you have to attach, you'll probably want the Ronin instead of the crane. Now there's a really cool addition to the market that is not just double duty, but triple duty, and that's the Manfrotto Move. So it's a gimbal, a tripod, and a monopod. I haven't used it yet, but watch the videos of Brandon Lee, it really shows how versatile it is. So this is probably something I'm gonna add to my kit very soon. So you've got your mirrorless camera, that's your Cam A. 
your Cam B is likely going to be an action camera. This is gonna come in handy whether you're on a bus, on a ferry, on a boat, or you're actually underwater and you need something very stable with decent picture quality. The go-to is GoPro. The Hero 10 Black is improved as usual over its predecessor and it has a much easier to use screen. You can stream to your app and that doubles as a monitor. It even shoots up to 5K at 60 frames per second and 4K at 120. So it's called an action camera for a reason. It's got excellent inbuilt stabilization. Strap it on a car, on the wheel, on the dashboard, and you're gonna get smooth footage. To make your footage look more cinematic and less action cammy, I recommend that you take off the wide angle setting, which is more like a fisheye, and use the middle resolution which looks more like film. A newer addition to the market is the Insta360. Now this is a, just a cool camera to have. Maybe you're shooting some behind the scenes and it's very small and very portable. It also allows you to move within the frame and capture, yes, 360 degrees of footage. You simply hold it in your hand and now you have a more than panoramic image. As much as possible, bring gear that can double as something else. While it's obvious that your phone can function as a B cam, it can also function as a monitor. You may wanna use it as the monitor for your GoPro or your Sony or your Canon, um, and you can even just strap it right on your wrist. That way you don't have to bring a separate monitor, you don't have to rig it to your gimbal and have to unrig it every time you pack up. And that's why I recommend you use Mini Slate, which is an app right there on your phone instead of bringing a slate. All right, let's talk about how to get your gear from point A to point B. Think roller bag. I love low pro bags because they have wheels. They are perfect for carrying on the plane. They're the right size. And that just kind of alleviates anxiety for me because I love to have all my gear with me and not wondering if it's gonna clear customs, if it's gonna be lost or delayed. So here are some items you don't wanna be without while you're doing travel filmmaking. Number one, gaff tape. It's obvious. You're gonna use it for a million different things, whether it's for attaching a mic to a person or just wrapping up your gear because something is loose, maybe you lost a screw or a pin it's going to save the day. Also bring some Joby Gorilla Pods. They're flexible, they're light. You can use it to attach your camera to a railing or uh, again, if you're in a vehicle and you need to kind of hook something together, like rig at the last minute, you'll definitely wanna have some Gorilla Pods handy. I'm all about style, <laughs> even when I'm traveling, but you gotta have a fanny pack. Your fanny pack is gonna save your life. Whether you have a walkie in there or some extra batteries or a lens cleaner, an ND filter, whatever it is, just wear the fanny pack and thank me later. Be smart, label your gear. Put your name and phone number on everything in case you leave something behind accidentally, you drop it, whatever the case. It will also help you as you're taking inventory, which I recommend every time you pull your gear out and put it away, just quickly go through the checklist or have your PA do it. This is gonna save you so much headache if you are just on the run and you forget something. So likely if you're shooting run and gun, you are working with a limited budget. So here are some money saving tips. Number one, purchase your gear used or refurbished. I love b &H Photo for this purpose because I can trust it. I know that any used gear has been fully checked out and cleaned and it's gonna still last me a long time and save maybe hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Consider renting gear locally. It can actually be cheaper depending on which country you're in. Number two, hire crew locally. Again, you'll save money on travel, hotels, accommodations, things like that if you're able to work with a local crew. And local crews are great. They know the area, they know um, how to get around certain restrictions, and they understand traffic, they know uh, the best light at each location. I hope this video was helpful. Now you know all the gear you need for run and gun travel filmmaking. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Global Girl Travels. Check out my website, Purple Noon Productions. And yes, be sure to subscribe to Tongle for even more helpful filmmaking tips. Thanks for watching, I'm Jessica Peterson.